What about the regulatory uh, implementation piece? Because for instance, yeah. I was reading the book and I'm fascinated by containers and oh, okay. how the standardizing of containers oh, cool. revolutionized I mean, For sure. activity on the planet. Yeah. And learning through your book about the different types of fuel and just the congestion at ports caused by extraordinarily large sea-borne container yeah. ships, cargo yeah. ships, which is a necessity to reduce drag because they're optimizing for fuel. Right. And the alternative that you propose seems like a no-brainer, right? I but, th think but then so. I'm like, well, wait a second. <laughs> is it like the Greek and Chinese cartels, so to speak, <laughs> like the sort of... Uh, so you've named two more kinds of risk. <laughs> yeah. So Yeah. I mean, what are we talking all about? Right. So just to make it clear for the audience, we have a team that's developing cargo ships that are autonomous. So I don't think it's that hard. You duct tape a Tesla to the front and it can drive across an ocean. Probably anybody listening would believe that's possible. There's nothing to hit out there. One documented pedestrian ever. Are we talking about JC? Is that a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other than that, it's probably going to work. You know, I don't think it's any not very questionable at this point. The other important advancement is it's sailing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need a crew, but it doesn't need fuel. Mm -hmm. Those two trillion dollars spent in the in the shipping industry every year are spent. Five out of six of those dollars is burned. You said sailing. What if there's no wind? If there's no wind, we have electric back up to get out of the dead zone. I see. But we're actually really good at weather prediction because even cargo ships now need to avoid storms. And so the weather prediction has improved so much. We're really good at that. But yeah, your worst case scenario is you got a ship full of bananas and they're stuck in a dead zone. So we have electric backup to get out of the dead zone and then they sail themselves. Why aren't these things everywhere? Exactly. So they're not everywhere because We've all learned about disruption. You've seen what happened. Any taxi company in the world could have made an iPhone app. None of them did. Instead, they ended up suing Uber everywhere they launched. Any shipping company in the world could make this ship. None of them will. Yeah. So that's what we have to do. That's what the tech industry needs to do. That's why deep tech matters. That's why I want your fans who are listening, once they graduate from software, come help us build this ship. You don't need to be a physicist. I got physicists. What I need is entrepreneurs who want to build these industries. And when you look at what happened with Uber, that playbook is incredible. What happens the day my first ship sails? Do we sell this to Maersk? That would be like Uber selling to Yellow Cab. No, yeah. we build the next Maersk. Yeah. That's the opportunity. Would you have rather built Uber or Maersk? Right. I mean, Maersk just might take it into hospice, right? I mean, risk of assassination is high. I get, I grant that <laughs> maybe higher than even in taxis because there are a few big cabals globally that run the shipping industry. You might need to partner with one of them, but that's a tomorrow problem. <laughs> the truth is we can do this. Pablos, one day I'm going <laughs> to ask you for a favor. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I might need one myself. So after this airs, so the point is you could identify, you know, I don't know, risk of assassination is a fourth kind of risk, but Look, we have to build these things. The regulatory risk in different industries, you know, in shipping, you're dealing with Teamsters and ports. I mean, that's where labor unions come from. You know, read about the Wobblies having shootouts with the sheriff's office. I mean, this is crazy stuff in the history of, of labor. So, you know, you got to be careful about who you put out of a job. But I think it's one of these exciting things. What you mentioned is... The reason ships are so big is because you get a drag advantage. Yeah. You get improved drag. When you double the size of a ship, your drag only goes up by 50%. So you're incentivized to build the biggest ship you can. Well, those ships are clogging up ports. So if you look at what's happening in shipping, your Happy Meal toys start out in China. It takes 50 days to get them to Los Angeles. Only 14 of those days are on the water. The rest of the time, they're just hanging out at port waiting yeah. to get load or unload. So that 14 days is a little slower when you're sailing, 30% slower, but overall it's faster. But we can make smaller ships and lots yeah. of them. So, I mean, I guess you need to get to a certain yeah. position of dominance in order to clear the congestion at ports. You would need to start replacing a lot of the container ships that are clogging. I mean, that would be great, but we'll start out with tiny 
ships that move a few containers to islands. I mean, there's all yeah. these islands that you can't even get a ship to. Yeah. And we could just do that. 